What's going on, Lead Gen Beast? Matty Ice here, Leads for Locals. I uh, got another awesome Go High Level tutorial for you guys. Going to be showing you how to build a really powerful pipeline inside of Go High Level. This is an awesome feature that Go High Level gives us. And uh, hopefully, what I'm about to show you will help you close more deals. So, the pipeline is meant to help you uh, stay organized with your overall pipeline uh, and, and like all of your leads and your list and stuff like that. Uh, where everybody's at in the sales process, but uh, you can also use it to trigger some really powerful automations to help you stay in front of people and, and close more deals, etc. My camera's kind of screwed. Oh, there we go. So uh, yeah, uh, so the first half of this video, I'm going to be going over the overall strategy of uh, creating a really awesome pipeline for your business. And then I'll take you into go high level and show you how to put it together. All right. So make sure you stick to the end. Got some really good stuff in this video. As uh, usual, my only ask, if you find the video helpful, go ahead and smash that like button for me. Make sure you subscribe, check out all the links in the description. Always have good stuff for you guys there. Uh, and if you don't have go high level, you want to support the channel and the content, I would appreciate it. I uh, have an affiliate link for go high level down below. Check it out. All right, let's get into the overall strategy and process first. So basically what we want to do here is you want to map out your entire sales process and also uh, write down where do you lose sales uh, as people progress through your funnel and your sales process, where do you typically lose those sales? And we want to add those stages to our pipeline so we can create automations to try and save those deals. And, and actually close the sale. All right, so let's talk about the overall sales process first, and then we'll get into where we lose sales. I'm gonna give you an example. Uh, so my SaaS product, I run an agency obviously, and uh, my SaaS product is for the business loan industry. So I'm just gonna use that as an example here. So basic sales process, and this is like really simplified, but uh, we got the initial opt-in or the initial interest that someone expresses in getting funding for their business. So we're offering free lead magnets, you know, to, to build the list and, uh, you know, we're getting name, email and phone number. And that's kind of the initial uh, opt-in into the sales process. From there, um, you know, we're sending out emails and text messages and stuff like that automatically. But the next step is they uh, basically to get on a phone call with them. And we have a step in our funnel that allows them to uh, the, the prospect to request a call from the business uh, uh, to learn more about their funding options. And they have to complete a short questionnaire providing basic information about their business. Right. Um, you don't necessarily have to use a questionnaire. Uh, you could go straight to an appointment. It's up to you. I like adding the questionnaire, though, to get that additional information. And it just tends to generate a little bit higher intent lead. Right. So next step, request a call. That's where we're, we're trying to get on the phone with them, learn about their situation and how we can help them. Uh, they can also book an appointment. So these two kind of go together right here. Number two and three. We don't wait for appointments to get booked because they people are still requesting the call. Uh, but we give them an opportunity to choose a day and time to be contacted if they want. So that's the next step. And then basically from there, assuming everything goes smoothly, uh, the the next step is like once you have the conversation, uh, we learn about what they're, you know, learn more about their business, their revenue, their credit, what they're looking for, how much they need, et cetera, and what they need it for. We go ahead and send them an application, uh, like a, an official application to get the funding. And they send that back. Uh, we send it into underwriting with the lender uh, for review to see if we can get them approved. And then it's basically a decision. They are, they're either approved or they're not approved, right? So that's the the basic sales process. You know, obviously there's a lot more, uh, a lot more to it, and we're we're going to cover that in a second. But uh, the, what I wanted to do with this is to give you an example of what it looks like to map out the sales process from start to finish. So do that. Uh, just like if everything goes smoothly, what does your sales process look like? That's what you want to do here. All right. And, and the purpose of this is we're going to create stages in the pipeline for each one of these steps. And I'll, I'll show you that when we head over to go high level. Now, what I want you to do is write out where things can go wrong. Where can you lose the sale? So I'll give you some examples here. Uh, number one, they don't pick up the phone after requesting that call. So they fill out the questionnaire. They request the call. We contact them five, six, seven times. You just can't get them on the phone. What do you do with that lead at that point? So we're going to create a stage for that. Uh, maybe they book the appointment. They don't show up for the appointment. What do you do? Uh, obviously, you want to try and contact them again, send emails, text messages, continue calling, try and get it rescheduled, get them on the phone. So we want a stage for that. 
What happens when somebody gives you a wrong number? That happens. You know, it, it, it just is what it is. Maybe you get them on the phone and they're interested, but they're busy or they're just not ready. They just wanted to kind of get the process in motion a little bit. What do you do with them? All right. Uh, let's see. We uh, So sometimes we send the application, but they don't complete it. Uh, they need to like do a DocuSign and uh, or they, they fill out an application. Sometimes they don't send over the bank statements. Uh, we don't usually run into that issue with regards to uh, like when people are using the application we have inside of my SaaS product because they have to, in order to complete the loan application, they have to upload the bank statements, but some people do it a little bit differently. So maybe they don't send the bank statements. So, well, if we don't have the bank statements, we can't submit the application and now the deal is stuck. What do you do? And then maybe they're approved, uh, but haven't signed the official loan documents to get the funds transferred into their account. Uh, there's plenty, unfortunately, like, like that's a really frustrating part where you're so close to closing the deal, everything is good. And then all of a sudden they just ghost you, they disappear. I'm sure you guys have run into that many times, right? So uh, these, are, these are some examples where as people progress through the sales process, things happen and that's where we can end up losing the deal. And that's what, th what I just showed you is what we want to create the pipeline around, all right? So let's head over to go high level. Now, uh, creating the pipeline itself inside of go high level is pretty easy. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you can do it in either opportunities or we can just go to settings here and click on pipelines. All right. And basically we're just going to create a stage for each one of the, the steps that we just wrote out for the sales process and where we can, we, uh, where we can lose those deals. So you just create new pipeline. Um, I'll edit this one just so you can see an example here. And I start uh, from, from the top. I just, work our way down as people, as, as people progress through the sales process, that that's how I organize it from start to finish top to bottom here. So here's the initial opt-in. We have a couple of different lead magnets that we do. We have a reactivation campaign as well. That's a different training. Survey completed is basically the requested call. That's the same exact thing. And then what happens, uh, what, what can typically happen, uh, as, as people progress through this part of the sales process is they can give us a wrong number. Maybe we contact them. Maybe we don't contact them. All right. What happens when, like I was mentioning, we, tr they request a call. We try to contact them five, six, seven times, and they're just not picking up the phone. We have a stage for that. All right. The next step was the appointment booked. They could also not show up for the appointment. Long-term follow-up uh, is when they're interested, but they're just not ready right now, or maybe they're not qualified or who knows, wh whatever it might be, but we put them in a long-term follow-up stage. Application sent, not received, received, app in no statements. That's what I was saying when uh, someone will complete the application, but not send in the bank statements. We put them in there. All right. Assuming that we get everything finally, we put them in underwriting, right? So, so now their, their application is being reviewed for approval. Uh, either they're approved, they're approved, but lost, meaning what I was saying earlier, where uh, everything is good to go. We're so close to closing the deal, but they ghost us and they just disappear and we can't get that final signature. Right. Uh, so we have a stage for that. We have a stage for not approved. And then finally, hopefully the deal gets funded. We put them in deal funded. Right. So that's that's creating the, the actual pipeline. And basically, you just click add stage here and you can move these up and down. Uh, within the pipeline uh, to reorganize it if you want. And then you just click save. So give it a name and then click save. Uh, I'm going to get rid of my camera because it's lagging really bad. Sorry about that. All right. Uh, so that's, uh, that, that's how you create the pipeline. And then from there, what we want to do is create automations. Now, I, I'm not going to break down every single automation here, guys. Uh, if you want, uh, if you want to learn more about the, these types of automations, how to put them together and really mastering the workflow builder and just go high level in general, I have a go high level mastery program that I'm coming out with very, very soon. I'll have a link to it down in the description. Once it's done, should be done very soon. If you want to check that out, I'll have a coupon for uh, code for you guys as well, where I dive into like how to really actually, uh, like, like create all of these different types of automations, but I'll just show you a couple of examples here. So uh, let me find, let's go, uh, actually a lot of them are in uh, advanced follow-up here. So let's do uh, bank statements. Uh, where's my bank statements? App in no statements, okay? So this is where they submit the application, but we don't get the, uh, 
uh, we haven't received the statements back yet. All right. So uh, I, as you saw, I have multiple pipelines. So basically anytime my clients uh, put a, a person in this stage, so th these are all the workflow triggers. Uh, the trigger is going to be uh, pipeline stage changed. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Pipeline stage changed. All right. And you're going to select your pipeline and then you choose that stage within your pipeline app in no statements. And what happens, so I'll, whoops, uh, what happens real quick uh, in the opportunities tab is this is where your pipelines are. Uh, when we, if we scroll over here and we, and we see that stage right there, when we drag this, uh, that contact, or, uh, uh, cause you can, for those of you that are brand new here, you can drag and drop contact cards or you can open up the contact card, scroll down to the bottom and we can just change their stage right there, click update, and it'll move them into that pipeline stage. And this has two benefits. One, it keeps you organized. So you can see how many people you have in this stage that you need to continue following up with, but it's also gonna trigger our automation to automatically send those emails and text messages uh, with very you know customized language to that particular stage. So uh, let's go back to that workflow, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay. So we add a tag. I, I add a tag for just about every workflow that I create. Uh, it can really help, you know, you can create smart lists and, you know, do custom email and text campaigns later on, even after the workflow builder. So it's just always a good idea to add a tag here. And then we send that initial email and text uh, basically saying, hey, we, you know, we received your funding application, but still need your bank statements, submit it to underwriting. Can you get those to me when you get a chance? Blah, blah, blah. The email basically says the same thing. Uh, I have a template right here that I use, but it's basically saying the same thing. And then we'll have a link. Um, I actually have a link that, uh, so if someone were to click the link in this email, it takes them to a form inside of Go High Level that uh, where the, the prospect or the contact can upload the bank statements and then we move forward in the process. Then what I have it do is uh, I have it wait two days. So, uh, so we give it a little bit of a time buffer here. And then I have the system check to see if they're still in each or either one of these states. So you see here or, or, or pipeline stages in any of these app in no statement stages. All right. And basically what you're doing there. Uh, so uh, we're using the uh, if we scroll down, click, uh, plus sign, scroll down. We're using the if else action right here. And we're you know, choosing opportunities. And then we choose the pipeline first is business funding. And then we add a condition. All right. And then it's, uh, let's see. Actually, you know what? I think you could, you could just do the stage. Uh, here, let me see. Pretty sure you can. We can do pipeline stage is, yeah. It'll, uh, it'll automatically bring up the pipeline, but uh, right here, pipeline stage is app in, app in no statements, and it's in the business funding pipeline. So this is the pipeline right here. And then we can add a segment, change it to or. So if you have multiple pipelines, all right, uh, like I do, all right, uh, we do pipeline stage is, you know, we do a search app in no statements, and we do it for the next pipeline, right? And we click save. That's how you would create this. And what it's doing, it's checking to see that this is where uh, the smart CRM portion really starts to come in because you can continue to follow up with people based off of what stage they're they're still in. So, for example, if someone does uh, submit their statements after they get this initial email and text, we don't want to continue email and texting them that, hey, we need your statements, right? That's just dumb. We don't, we don't want to be doing that. So we create this if else condition. And if they're not in those stages anymore, that means that we either spoke with them or we got the statements. So we just end this workflow. We don't need to do anything. But if they're still in those stages, again, if they, if they are still in the, these particular stages here, then we send another email and another text. Just reminding them to get my last email about sending your bank statements. Then we wait three days. We do the same thing. Uh, you can literally just copy or clone this action. You just copy it and then you select where you want it to go. And then we do the same exact thing. It checks to see if they're in still in those stages. If they're not, it ends it. If they are, then we send another series of emails and text messages. And you can just keep adding to this uh, for as long as you want. And that's basically how um, all of the workflows work uh, are, are set up, guys. Uh, like I could show you all of these different examples, 
but I don't really have to because they're set up very similarly as the one you just saw. Uh, so I'll show you maybe one more example. Uh, let's do the wrong number one. Or, uh, yeah, let's do the wrong number. Uh, well, no, because that, that won't have text messages. I mean, it really doesn't matter. But let's do uh, the appointment no-show. All right, appointment no-show reschedule. So when if, if we were to put... Uh, so this is just for one particular pipeline. I have this workflow for each one of my pipelines, but they're they're just in a separate workflow. But basically, it's the same workflow trigger here. Pipeline stage changed. You choose the pipeline and the stage, right? So when you put someone in this stage in your opportunities tab, that's where your pipeline is, then this is what's going to happen right here. Waits a minute, sends the initial email and text. Hey, tried to call you for our appointment today. Got, I guess you got busy. What's a good time to reschedule? The email basically says the same thing and it has a call to action that leads back to the appointment calendar to reschedule that appointment. All right, we wait two days and look at this. What a, uh, the, the, the uh, what is it? Uh, if else condition, same exact thing. If they're still in this stage, in the appointment no-show stage, uh, then we send another email and another text. If they're not, that means they either rescheduled or we contacted them. So we don't need to do anything to try and reschedule the appointment. All right. Uh, we wait five days and we're, you know, we keep adding to this, but that's basically how, uh, how to, how to create a really powerful pipeline guys. I mean, uh, your, your pipeline, especially if you're doing like high ticket sales or phone sales and you're following up with people, you know, it takes multiple calls, things like that. Uh, th this is just such a powerful feature and you want to be utilizing it as much as possible, guys. So this helps you stay organized, but it allows you to create some really cool automations to try and help save, save those deals that you would otherwise lose because you don't have those automations in place. So I hope that was helpful, guys. Drop some feedback down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any requests for specific uh, Go High Level tutorials, let me know what those are as well. Hope you guys are crushing it, and I'll talk to you in the next one.